Hi guys, this is gsno.com and I'm here with a review of the Samsung Galaxy A71. Fresh after the review of the A51 comes the bigger model, this time with a diagonal of 6.7 inches. It's the follow-up of what we described as the best media consumption phone of 2019, that was the Galaxy A70, this is the A71. It gives you a quad camera to behold and also it's priced at around $429 on Amazon. Okay, so it also got the Snapdragon 730 CPU from the Galaxy A80, so that's important. Now the design can be described very easily, it's basically a bigger Galaxy A51. I feel that the uh, punch hole camera has become bigger. We have the bezels which have been cut quite a bit from the Galaxy A70 times. And aside from that, it's obviously plastic material. Of course, we have glass at the front, but uh, the frame and the back side are polycarbonate catching some rainbow colors here there are also other hues out there which are probably more mesmerizing uh, like for example crush black silver blue and pink now if you want measurements 7.7 millimeters in thickness 179 grams in weight and that's what you get here i would say that it's well decently easy to handle with a single hand even though it's quite a long phone and it's not slippery no matter what you would expect, it's not. The buttons here feel a bit plasticky, like I said on the Galaxy A51. And honestly, it doesn't look bad one bit. Uh, for the price you pay, glass would have been better at the back side. And this plastic is prone to some scratches. Now on the display front, 6.7 inch Super AMOLED Full HD Plus with a punch hole selfie camera. Now uh, to get things going, uh, we're going to go to YouTube and enjoy a test video like this. It's full HD, 60 frames per second with HDR and all the goodness, and here we go. Now, uh, as you can see, the punch hole camera is more visible than on the Galaxy A51. We have a pretty crisp screen here, which is very bright and has pretty wide view angles, deep blacks and vivid colors. Okay, let's do this. It's a pretty enjoyable experience with a lot of details, wide angles, and pretty satisfying in both movies and games. Okay, now it's that part of the review where we analyze the screen performance and we start off with uh, putting the screen under the microscope. This is the pixel arrangement that we got. It's of the Pentile Matrix variety and then we measure the brightness achieving a very respectable level of, let's see, 513 lux units. Well, this is actually superior to quite a few phones. Uh, it manages to beat Huawei P30 Pro, Galaxy A51 and even the Galaxy A70, which is only good news. And we have, uh, excuse me, we have more here. Screen brightness. These are the phone it beats. You can see here Huawei P30 Pro. At the same time, it scores below the iPhone 11, Motorola One Zoom and the Xiaomi Mi Note 10. I would say it's in pretty good company. So there's that. It's placed on the 64th spot from the hundreds of phones we've tested. So if you want to do some tweaks related to the screen, you would go here and tweak the brightness, adaptable brightness, blue light filter, dark mode, and there are the screen modes, which include the vivid or natural with this white balance slider and RGB sliders. I'm going to leave it to natural because I favor that. All in all, a satisfying screen. And now we move inside the phone. Uh, let's see what makes it tick. So first of all, there has been a CPU swap. It gets the Qualcomm Snapdragon 730 from the Galaxy A80 and also from the Xiaomi Mi 90 and also from the Redmi K20. It's an 8 nanometer CPU, octa core, 2.2 gigahertz, accompanied by 6 or 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 GB of storage. Plus, we also have uh, uh, micro SD in a dedicated slot. The storage is of the UFS 2.1 variety, just so you know. And compared to what I said about the Galaxy A51, this one doesn't skip a bit. The A51 every now and then uh, managed to tangle the web, so to say, and uh, get a sort of mini lag going, especially after the boot of the phone and after updates were being performed wirelessly. This one doesn't have the problem. And it's also good news for the gamers out there. The games will look great. I'm going to be playing Asphalt 9 and also Call of Duty Mobile and PUBG Mobile hassle-free with no problem, no lag, and with pretty high details, I would say. Benchmark-wise, well, we also have that covered. Here we go. 
So benchmarks, I'm going to start with Antutu 7. Here we managed to be the Xiaomi Mi Note 10 and the Mi 9T, which has the same CPU, which is not a bad performance. And in Antutu 8, which is more relevant and more recent, we beat the TCL Plex and Motorola One Zoom plus the Motorola One Action, at the same time scoring below the Xiaomi Mi Note 10 and the, below the Xiaomi Redmi Note 8 Pro. Also the Huawei Nova 5T. Okay, uh, let's skip straight to the GPU test, which shows you how good the phone is for gaming and all that. Here we scored above the Galaxy A80, unexpected, above the Xiaomi Mi Note 10 and the Redmi Note 8 Pro, so not that bad. And below, let's see, Honor 10, P20 Pro, Galaxy 10 Plus, so in the end, not bad one bit. Okay, so we're done with the benchmarks. Things to remember here is that we gravitate around the Xiaomi Mi Note 10 and also around the Xiaomi Redmi K20, aka the Mi 9T. Those are the phones that are close in performance to this one, even though they may be cheaper in some countries. So we also did a temperature test. Let's see how that panned out. You can see here one of them, one of the results is 33.5 degrees Celsius achieved when charging up the phone and also when gaming. When benchmarks 32.2 degrees Celsius, so there's no overheating. Here you can see the heat map with pretty good dissipation and the warmest point being next to the camera, but not in an exaggerated fashion. Now, battery wise, this was supposed to be a pretty solid phone with a 4,500 mAh battery, just like the predecessor. On paper, we're promised 24 hours of video playback, which is actually pretty impressive for a promise, where in real life, in real life, it's not exactly 24 hours. It's more like 17 hours and 55 minutes, which is not bad still. It beats Huawei Mate 30 Pro, as you can see here, and also the Xiaomi Mi A3 and the Galaxy A80. Still, the Galaxy A70 fared better. It had 20 hours and 31 minutes. Also, the Xiaomi Mi 90 did better than this phone. And what we're dealing with here is the video playback test. This is the continuous usage one. 13 hours and 54 minutes. It's actually the 20th placed phone, not bad. Above Galaxy A50, above uh, Xiaomi, excuse me, above the Galaxy Note 10 Plus and the Xperia 5. By the way, it's the exact equal of the Galaxy A70, believe it or not. Below the Xiaomi Mi A3, a Asus Zenfone 6 and the Redmi K20, just so you know. I'm pretty impressed by the charging though a mere 1 hour and 20 minutes. Not bad. And after 1 hour of juicing up, 91%, 30 minutes, 54%. So honestly speaking, I'm more impressed by the charging than by the uh, battery life itself. Even though that's pretty solid in itself, even though the Galaxy A70 has the upper hand in the video department. On the acoustics front, we only have a singular speaker here, which we will not cover in uh, landscape mode. So I think it's time to fire up the play music app and see what we got. We also got a standard equalizer, no need to talk about that. And uh, here we go, listen to a tune. Impressions, okay, so pretty loud and clear, uh, not exactly mind blowing, cannot cover a conversation in a smaller room. Decent bass, no distortion. The bag vibrates quite a bit um, and well, that's about it. So not a memorable experience, rather solid, decent for a mid-range phone. Now things to remember, we also did a decibel meter test. 85.8 decibels was the acoustic sample test result. It's rather modest. It beats the Galaxy A40, Huawei P20 Pro, iPhone 11 Pro Max, stays below the Galaxy A70, the predecessor and Nokia 6.2. And here we have the gaming test, 99.3 decibels. This is actually decent, but we've seen dozens of phones go past 100 decibels. And that includes Galaxy A50 and Xiaomi Mi A3, but at least we beat the Zenfone 6. Okay, now it's time to discuss the camera. And you can see here the cutout of the front for the selfie shooter. It's a 32 megapixel camera here, which does 4K video capture. And at the back side, things get interesting. So the quad camera setup that we got here includes an LED flash. It can take 4K video capture. It's got a main 64 megapixel camera, 12 megapixel ultra wide shooter. And then we have two 5 megapixel shooters. There is the macro one, there is the bokeh one, and that's about it. 
The camera interface has features like AI, moving pictures, night mode, pro mode, slow motion, super steady, live focus and all that, even though it doesn't go all the length of giving you video live focus, just photo live focus. Okay, so first things first. First thing I noticed here, I should remind you that I was underwhelmed by the Galaxy A51 in the previous review in some aspects. I am actually overwhelmed here. It's much better than the Galaxy A51. Uh, we start off with some HDR shots and with some pretty decent ultra wide shots. Check it out. So a regular shot and then with the ultra wide, even though the sun is in front of me, I don't see any distortion, chromatic aberration uh, or problems with the image. So things seem to be a bit more clear this time around, a bit more details. The sky is definitely improved. The main problem that the Galaxy A51 had was the sky. It was not a natural blue. That's solved here. Very happy with the selfies as I was on the Galaxy A51. I'm not gonna lie, the quality should be about the same. Nice level of detail. You can take full 32 megapixel shots. This is the bokeh separation. You can see me clearly cut from the background with satisfying results. Excellent texture of the skin. I actually removed the beautifying effects on purpose to see all the imperfections of the skin. Okay, so, so far we got great colors, great texture and details, also excellent lighting and finally a decent piece of sky. We go further, looking for colors. I think I have too many selfies. This is bokeh, uh, or one of them should be, here it is. This is bokeh taken with the main camera. A perfect cut from the background of this little toy dog and one of the best bokehs I've taken with a mid-range phone. Finally, colors, well calibrated, not distorted or exaggerated in any fashion. This camera actually reminds me at times of the iPhone 8 or iPhone 10, believe it or not. Even more colors. And I'll say it again, the ultra wide capture will not distort your image in any way, shape or form. Okay, so regular shot, ultra wide shot. Zero problems, zero deformation, maybe some loss of detail in the distance. And then I exercised my ability in taking a macro shot, took a while, but the results were impressive. So I saw this figure here, this big bird, and check out the eye. This is the eye of the character with a lot of texture and it's done using the 5 megapixel macro camera. Pretty impressive and I actually went ahead and did the same with a cone. I also took some bokehs of it and a few close-ups till I got the one which was the exact definition of a macro. Actually, I found those macros to be superior to the Galaxy A51 even though they share the same camera. Even more macros here with an impressive amount of detail making the small things appear bigger. So color me impressed, the difference is much clearer here from the Galaxy A70 than it was with the A51 coming from the A50. Okay, low light shots time now. I would like to highlight this opportunity uh, in order to mention that I found this to be the best macro I've ever taken, those I've taken here. Now it's time for the low light shots. Now, I have to say that uh, it's much better than what I did with the Galaxy A51. That's what I found here. Much better clarity, less distortions and aberrations. Every now and then a problem with the ultra wide shots. But even so, not bad. Natural colors and it handles well the lighting. So some phones, when they encounter lighting, they will tend to distort everything and create huge halos. Not the case here. Some of these street lights may be overblown, but it's rather a rarity than an often occurrence. Pretty good focus, pretty nice details. So except for the ultra wide, well, even the zoom impressed me, believe it or not, digital one. Some reflections here and there, are there, some softer details to be expected for the ultra wide, but in the end, possibly one of the best mid-range phones out there around $400. And this is the photo taking, and now we're off to the video taking. Okay, so I'm going to resort to the app called MX Player Pro. We got nine videos to enjoy and I'm going to start with the selfie one. We actually have two selfie, full HD selfie and 4K selfie. Let me just go with this one here. Okay, so it looks crisp and clear, that's for sure. Uh, not very well stabilized, it's 4K after all. And there's a lot of contrast, that's what I felt. In both selfie videos, a lot of contrast. But if you're going for clarity and brightness, you got plenty, plenty, plenty. Okay, so we also have a stabilization test. We actually descend in the set of stairs with the super steady mode activated. 
and for a $400 phone it performed like a well $800 phone keep in mind stairs are pretty steep and there's no flicker there's no shakiness there's no focus loss speaking of which the Galaxy A51 lost focus every now and then this one doesn't and we're adding more color to your life if you shoot in 4k you're going to be happy with the results even though it's a bit shakier and the contrasts are a bit more intense nice clarity nice colors solid brightness and focus all around better than the predecessor and better than the galaxy a51 for sure in many occasions comparable to the galaxy a80 which it actually intends to rival at some point and another video here bit more shaky but the zoom is i would say decent and now to the weak point of the phone it's the low light video capture not as weak as the galaxy a51 it's something like a five percent or ten percent bump less lines on the screen but things are shaky and flickery for sure as expected considering it's still a mid-range phone throughout the filming the microphone was fine so there's that some reflections here and there if you're sitting uh, tight and not moving around you may be happy with the result but if you're moving a lot or even panning fast this is not your video taking night camera okay we're done so uh, basically it's closer to the galaxy a80 than the a70 which should be a sort of compliment at times reminding me of the galaxy s10e camera wise on the connectivity front we got the usb-c we got the audio jack we got a microphone here and one at the top we got separate nano sim card slots separate from the micro sd there's wi-fi dual band and gps dual band nfc bluetooth 5.0 uh, glonass galileo bds and ant plus there's 4g lte here wi-fi direct i think i covered everything or i sure hope i did okay we're done with that uh, we took we took and received calls and they were loud and clear and this is the speed test that we did on 4g we got up to 184 mega per second downloads which is very solid 63.3 mega per second uploads solid again on wi-fi 265 over 25 very fast and flagship worthy now on the software front you may as well check out our review of the galaxy a51 because the a71 has the exact same experience bixby aggregator here the bixby home gives you all you need app recommendations restaurant recommendations you name it pinch the screen and you get your widgets which are minimalistic transparent and white this is android 10 and one ui 2.0 and multitasking is done like this with a carousel of never-ending apps and here you can choose split screen or pop-up view for an extra layer of multitasking swipe down and you'll treat the notifications and you also treat it to the quick settings useful stuff like link to windows secure folder we got your dark mode and your bixby routines plus dolby atmos and also video recording for the screen on the security front we got the fingerprint scanner in the screen and let's do it like this it's a bit camera shy usually it works very fast and accurate more accurately than the Galaxy A51, I would say, and a bit faster. The animation is what drags it down a bit. We even have the edge bar here, if you're looking for an extra layer of shortcuts and ways to, well, cut stuff from the screen in your special screenshots. Other than that, let's see what else. We don't have a notification LED here. Uh, we have biometrics, confidentiality, advanced Bixby routines, gesture control, one hand use, digital well being, parental control, and always on display options. Now, on the apps front, you can see them here. We got your game launcher, we got your smart things, your Samsung Health, your radio, and your Bixby, the Google Suite, the uh, Microsoft applications, Spotify, Galaxy Store, Netflix, Samsung members. Samsung Notes, YouTube Music, and well, that's about it. And I guess it's time for the verdict. Okay, so verdict time. Let me fire up the browser and access our website. A good occasion to see the virtual keyboard and its numeric row at the top. This is gsnl.com. And the verdict is as follows. I'm going to start with the pros and cons. On the pro side, the phone has definitely a cute backside. It also had a pretty, has a pretty bright and crisp screen, Super AMOLED variety, good performance all around, solid battery, uh, good looking selfies, and the camera in general was above Galaxy A51, A70, and it competes with the Galaxy A80, which is no small feat, 
quality 4K video capture, fast connectivity and Android 10 with One UI 2.0 on top. Those are the pros. On the cons, we find the following. Buttons feel plasticky on the side. There's no notification LED. Um, the backside is prone to scratches. And the acoustics are below the Galaxy A70 actually. Poor low light video capture. Also, um, I would say that uh, the video contrast is, I would say, too powerful compared to what we got on the other phones out there when filming in selfie mode. So, too powerful contrast for the selfie videos, no stereo speakers, no IP68, and well, that's about it. Those are the cons. The Galaxy A70 before it was a fantastic multimedia device. It was meant for gaming and watching videos. This one stays the same. It loses three hours from the battery life, but it gains more firepower in the gaming department. It's more comparable to the Galaxy A80 than the A70, and that's a compliment in itself. If I were to pick, I would go for this one as a bigger upgrade rather than the Galaxy A51, provided that you actually require a bigger phone, because it's a big phone, but still, luckily, the grip is pretty solid and pretty decent. It's comparable to the Huawei Nova 5T and the Motorola One Zoom, and those are actually cheaper, so take that into account when you're performing the purchase. Good looker from the front, good looker from the back, and a bit of a powerhouse when it comes to mid-range photo and video capture. Also good for gaming. This is it from us. Hope you enjoyed the review of the Samsung Galaxy A71. Bye-bye.